What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update and quite a bit of talk regarding transfers within Tottenham Hotspur and also a very damning injury update as well, which we're going to get into later in the episode. But because we're going to start off with Connor Gallagher. Matt Law saying that Tottenham will make a new bid for Conor Gallagher if he does not agree a new deal. The expectation remains that Chelsea will make Gallagher a contract offer to extend the deal, but an agreement is still far from certain. Uh, I think I saw a report last week saying Conor Gallagher does really want to stay at Chelsea, but it's that FFP, the financial fair play, that is really um, coming up against Chelsea quite fast, to be honest. And I was listening to... Um, a financial expert on the way in on Talk Sport, and he was saying that Chelsea are desperate to sell uh, before the deadline. Uh, they are um, very well above the uh, the 105 million over the th last three years, so they're going to need to sell someone. And someone like Lukaku doesn't really cut it because he's not pure profit, and someone like Conor Gallagher would be 100% pure profit. Yeah, and I think it's a bit of an interesting one when it comes to Chelsea because. There's reports, especially I read uh, yesterday from The Athletic, saying that rivals believe that Chelsea are very much right now in breach of FFP and they, they're definitely going to have to sell if they're going to be within accordance of uh, financial fair play to be within that threshold. But Chelsea refute that. Chelsea are saying they're not in, in breach and they're, and they're actually not in danger of it. So there's kind of conflicting things coming from both sides. So it's going to be interesting come June the 30th, uh, which is when the accounts have to be filed, so if they are going to sell up some players, it has to be before that date. So when the season ends, obviously the Euros is also coming as well uh, in the in the summer. So if they are going to have to sell, there's going to be a very small window which they which they're able to do it. So we'll definitely know by the end of the season. But as I say, uh, we we all, we've spoken about Conor Gallagher enough on this channel. I, I'm, we're both obviously big fans of him. I think he'd be a great addition to the midfield. Actually, you know, watching him in the Carabao Cup final, I know he missed two really big opportunities, but I thought he had a really good game and he. Was was really unfortunate maybe he could have done a bit better with those two chances but I thought he played really well um but when it comes to Gallagher again as you say he's a Chelsea guy he he's uh born and bred I think a, a Spurs move might be tough for him to swallow the only r way I see this happening is if Spurs are the only realistic option for him and Chelsea have to sell and no one else is able to stump up the cash then it's possible but are we in that reality? I'm not 100% sure. Do Man United come in for him or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. I, I do feel like there aren't that many teams who are going to be able to afford him, to be honest. Well, at the end of the day, like they're going to need to accept whatever bid comes in, if any bid comes in, because they're, they're so close to this date. There's not, an, uh, like you said, there's not a big opportunity, a, not a big window for them to sell him. They're going to need to sell someone uh, for big money towards um, the end of that you know, the date, was it 30th of June? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, if the noise coming out of Chelsea is just a bit of gamesmanship just to get the best fee they can uh, for someone like Conor Gallagher. I wouldn't um, bet against that. In terms of will he be a good fit for Spurs, I think he would be a good fit for Spurs, but do we really need someone like him right now? I don't really know because when you're looking at the midfield options that we do have, Bentancor, Bissouma, um, all the other midfielders that we have in those areas, I just feel like if we're going to bring in a midfielder, we, we need to bring in like a real top quality number six. And I don't think Conor Gallagher should be like the top of our list, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, I guess it depends how we see Ben Tankor really. If we see him more of a, more of a number six than an eight, then Gallagher makes more sense. But if we see him more of an eight than a six, then I think maybe bringing a six would make more sense. Mm. Um, let's talk about Jonathan David now. As Matty Moretto says that Italian teams are interested in Jonathan David, but so are several Premier League teams. The Premier League sides are going to push hard for him and will invest a lot of money this summer for the likes of Jonathan David. And his likely destination is the Premier League this summer. Um, so in terms of Jonathan David... I think like I was quite disappointed with him at the World Cup a year ago or just over a year ago for Canada. I thought he would have done a lot better this year. I don't think he's doing as well as he did in the previous year, but he's still a good player, isn't he? Yeah, we know what Jonathan David's all about. He's a, a player with bundles of pace, always threatens that back line, especially playing on the last shoulder. Um, got a good finishing ability, but he's... He can be a bit incons inconsistent, uh, definitely in front of goal. I think we've seen that. He sometimes rushes his finishes. Um, I think this season, 23 appearances, 11 goals, 2 assists. It's not a bad return for the French League, but 
I think last season he was absolutely killing it. I think did he get over twenty five goals? He got a lot of goals last season, and he hasn't doesn't look 24, like twenty four. Yeah, twenty five. Yeah, twenty four. So he's not really matching that this season. Um, I think in all competitions, right, he got near near thirty potentially. Um, so I think. He got twenty six in all competitions. Twenty six, so it's pretty good, pretty good totals. Um, I don't think he's going to match that this season. I think this season is probably more closer to his true level than last season. So, I think he's a good player. I don't think he'd be a bad option for Tottenham, but I think he's going to cost a lot of money. And I think for the money that we would spend on him, there are better options out there. Yeah, I was about to say I completely agree. Um, as much as I liked Jonathan David, I think there are just better options out there. Maybe young, more young and up and coming players. I mean, the guy, he's not exactly old, but he's 24. Um, and you're going to spend at least the minimum of 50 million to sign someone like him. And I just feel like... He, we'd be better suited spending that kind of money elsewhere. We've already spent the likes of 50 million and 60 million on Richarlison. I feel like we need players with a higher ceiling uh, if we're going to spend that kind of money. Yeah, completely agree. Next up is Jaden Philogene. This is a really interesting one. He is having a sensational season in the championship this year with Hull. Team Talk are reporting that Tottenham are in pole position to sign in demand Hull winger Jaden Philogene. Spurs have had regular checks on Philogene throughout the season, and he's exactly what Ange Postacoglu wants in that position. Regular checks on Philogene sounds like a doctor's appointment. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but, you know, I don't know if any of you guys saw the goal that he scored a couple of weeks ago. It was given an own goal at first, and then it was in review given back to him mm. um, with that Rabona finish. Uh, it did take a massive deflection, found his way in the back of the net, but the way he took it past the two defenders uh, en route to that goal was uh, really sensational. And um, every time I've seen highlights of him or I've seen him play, he's really impressed me. Yeah, I mean, that goal was just one of those moments where the goal was so good, even though it probably was an own goal, they just couldn't give it, not give it to him yeah. because of the, how well he did with that Rabona. was a, a nutmeg, then a Rabona as well, was an unbelievable goal if you haven't seen it. I think it was against Rotherham. Yeah, look, he seems to be having a really good time of it in the championship uh, this season. Was it eight goals, six assists uh, so far this season uh, after a transfer from Aston Villa uh, in the summer? So he's been doing really, really well. 22 years of age, um, tricky customer. I don't know if he's... I, I know he's clearly having a bit of a breakout season in the championship. I don't know if that means he's now ready to uh, be performing in the Premier League. You know, we've got our sights set big on a winger this summer. We know that. And maybe if it comes to... If we, I do think we're going to go for two wingers this summer. I hope so anyway. And I do think we're going to go for one expensive, more established one. And we are going to go for, I reckon, and maybe a bit of a younger one with a higher ceiling. And maybe he fits that bill as that kind of profile. I wouldn't obviously want to be sitting here in the summer with him being our main winger signing. That would be disappointing. But... I don't know. He's having doing very well. I can't say I've seen too much about him apart from that Rabona, but he does seem to get having that end product at such a young age. Although 22 is not like a teenager, but you know, still relatively young. He seems to be developing that um, pretty well. So maybe that's a sign that he's really becoming um, a good player. What I like about him is that he ticks a lot of boxes. Obviously, he's English, so he fits that quota that we desperately need moving forward. He's equally as good as on the right as on the left wing as well. He is right-footed, um, but I feel like he just ticks a lot of boxes and if he can um, get to grips with the life at Premier League I think he'd be a really good addition for us mm. when uh, he cuts inside he'll just do a Rabona it's exactly <laughs> we're missing those Rabona since Lamella's gone the interesting thing with uh, Philogene though obviously like you said he moved from Aston Villa but Aston Villa do have a buyback clause on him mm. for £15 million pounds. so I feel like they're blessed with wingers as well so they are blessed with wingers I'm they're not uh, well, well they've they got, got Bailey, Bailey they've got Diab Diab they could do with another one but they also um on the fine lines of FFP, Aston mm, Villa. That's a good, good point. Um, yeah, but that, in that case, that could strengthen their reason true. To, to bid because he's cheap. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but if he is like on on the bound of going to Villa for 15 million, if we offer something like 20 million for him, like just over 15 million, maybe we can uh, get ahead of Aston Villa in that. If we get him early, yeah. potentially, yeah. Well, that's, that's, I mean, look, depends how much we want him. Um, and that buyback clause does last till the remainder of his contract, which I believe he has about two years left on. Um, next up, let's talk about Omar Mamouche, uh, Eintracht Frankfurt starter, build, uh, striker, builder reporting that um, a move to the Premier League might be on the cards for Omar Mamouche. Tottenham and Newcastle are interested in the 25-year-old Antrek Frankfurt striker. Meanwhile, the Bundesliga club will demand around 30 to 40 million to part ways with him. And he's been an absolute goal contribution machine this season. Um, I saw the stats before. I think it's 15 goal contributions in 18 games this season for Antrek Frankfurt. And um, 
He's never hit those numbers before, but he's a central striker. He's a second uh, striker as well, a bit like um, how the position that Deli Ali used to play for us. And um, look, it's a complete breakout season for him at the age of 25. It is as well. So I'm not sure if you can put your utmost trust in a player like that as well, though. Yeah, because he hasn't exactly done it year on year out. It's his first season. He reminds me a bit of like a Gabriel Jesus kind of striker. Mm, uh, he has been likened to him. Yeah, like he likes to come deep. He likes to pick, pick the ball up. He's got good dribbling ability. He can hold off players. But his finishing ability, I know he's got, what I think is it, 10 goals in, in the Bundesliga. 10 goals, 5 assists. There you yeah, go, 10 goals. But I'm saying in terms of the goals, obviously he scored goals. But, you know, you could argue the Bundesliga tax on that. You could argue with, uh, you know, look at the amount of goals Werner scored in the Bundesliga then you put him in the Premier League it's not quite the same but clearly he's been having a great time Frankfurt obviously um, well, I know the, how they were under Glasner I'm not sure how that maybe they play in a different way now I don't know if it's more possession based but um, is he the kind of striker we, we're looking for I mean we don't really have a striker like that to be honest you look at Richarlison and the Son they're both at their best when they're in the penalty area or nearer to the goal I know Son's been improving his all-round game but we don't really have a, a player who's like can be in that false nine kind of position pick it up like as much as Richarlison's been improving you still don't want him to pick up the ball and hang on to it he kind of is at his best when he's doing things very quickly releasing it quickly and getting into the box and even then getting first time finishes whereas um, Amush seems to be a very different kind of player likes to hang on to the ball dribble it ball carry with the ball as well and obviously maybe as well very similar to someone like a Matthias Cunha from Wolves kind of similar kind of ilk to that in that false nine kind of position so it would be an interesting signing but as you say he's at this is the first year in the Bundesliga he's really been hitting those numbers so you could either argue are we getting him just as he's starting to break out or is it just a one-off season it's hard to know yeah, and that's kind of like the way I feel about the uh, Stuttgart striker Sergio Garassi as well, like at the age he's at. He's having a sensational season. He's come back from the AFCON. I think he's starting to score goals again um, after he's come back. And it is the only season that he's been unbelievable for. So, But, you know, you never know. Sometimes, sometimes these players are late bloomers. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting one and it's hard one to kind of assess from the outside looking in, but maybe the scouting network at Tottenham could provide better insight into that for us. But um, let's finish off talking about the sad case of Ryan Sessegnon. Uh, Spurs official broke yesterday that Sessegnon has undergone surgery to his right hamstring following injury during the under-21s match. The 23-year-old will continue to be closely monitored by our medical team to determine whether he can return to training. And there was a separate report saying he's expected to be out for a further three months so that would put an end to his season even though he he's got what one appearance against Burnley in the cup this season when he came yeah. on I mean this guy he just can't stay fit it's it's gone from a hamstring on one leg to a hamstring on the other leg and I don't know where Sessegnon careers go from here to be honest yeah it's gutting for him I feel really bad for him because uh, I remember Ange was saying and he was saying you know they were very careful when to bring him back because they didn't want to bring him back too early and to make sure that they brought him back in a in a in a state where the injury wasn't going to reoccur and unfortunately no, the, the the injury hasn't reoccurred but it's occurred in the other leg and like what do you do about that there's nothing you can do like you've got to at some point come back and try uh, and get back and you know get back to full fitness and try and get back in the team but then when the injury goes in the other leg like what are you supposed to do about that there's like nothing you can do um, I feel so bad for him that that's happened it must be absolutely gutting and also it must be must play on you psychologically because you know you've just come back from an eight month or night what over a year layoff actually uh, and You've, you've been super careful about when to come back and then you've come back and now you're out for a further three months with a separate injury. So when you come back from that injury, imagine how it's going to play on you. Like, am I ready? Am I, can I trust my body and all this kind of stuff? So I feel for him. I feel for him. I really hope he can make a full recovery from all these injuries and get over them. But, you know, at this stage, you know, it's been four years now uh, or close to five years where he just hasn't been able to put a, a run of games together without picking up a serious injury and it just you just have to start the, asking the question at one some point like when will he yeah it's, it is it is heartbreaking uh, when you see a player go through that because you remember at Fulham at 16 year old um, had a smashing season in the championship came into the Premier League with Fulham had an okay pretty good season for someone of that age uh, coming into um, the Premier League for his first season and then he got that big move to Spurs off the back of it 30 million which was a big outlay at the time for Spurs 
And um, ever since he's joined Spurs, these injuries have just followed him around every single season. I don't think we've got a full season, Matt, or even close to a full season out of him since um, he's joined us. You know, under Conte, I think probably his best time in a Spurs shirt where we saw a bit of value in him. But again, the injuries just held him back every single time. He made a statement on social media yesterday um, and he said, gutted beyond belief, just when I saw light at the end of the tunnel, the thought I was back doing what I love, I've hit another setback. I've been down this road before I pick myself myself up, stay headstrong and begin my recovery in the best way possible. Having been through an operation and recovery on the other hamstring last year and knowing how strong that hamstring is now, I know this is the best solution to put an end to the re reoccurring injuries. Thank you to those who have sent messages of support. I can't express how it feels. We're all humans at the end of the day and I'm devastated more than anyone to have a setback. I'll do everything I can to get back on that pitch. Speaking on behalf of anyone who's been in this situation, please be careful with what you say online. Words hurt and no one chooses to be in this position. Love, Cess. Mm -hmm. And I have seen a lot of horrible messages um, surrounding Cessnion online by Spurs fans. And I think it's disgusting, really. Like, who chooses to be injured? Do you know what I mean? It's not his fault. It's just mm -hmm. a really unlucky set of events. Yeah, it's not like he's Undombele where he's just wasting away and, um, you know, not trying his hardest. He's available to play, but he's just, the manager doesn't trust him. The reality is he just, he picks up these injuries. He's got problems with his hamstrings. He doesn't choose to have that. I'm sure if it was his choice, he wouldn't have those problems. And I I, I see it, I see it all over, um, especially Twitter when, you know, this news breaks and they're all, everyone's going for him and they're saying, oh, you need to get rid, you just cancel his contract. He's just wasting up money. He's just picking up a paycheck. It's like, Session, I'm sure all he wants to do is get on that pitch and show what he's capable of. And he's unable to do that because of nothing that he can do no, nothing that his fault it's out of his control or that he's picked up these injuries so anyone like sending in any sort of abuse and any sort of that I think it's completely uncalled for and unwarranted and I feel for him because he's in this position where the injury is bad enough and then he's getting all these messages on social media I mean that must take a lot on, on, on him psychologically so I hope he's getting the support um, from the club and his I'm teammates sure he and, will everything be, yeah. and everything else yeah I'm sure he'll be getting that support and uh, look we're obviously in massive support of Ryan Sessnion whether um, he comes back this season, which looks unlikely, or next season. But the reality is next season he'll be going into his last year of his contract. So um, he doesn't have much time to turn it around, to be honest. Um, so we'll see what happens with Ryan Cessnon. But that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding all the news stories we've brought to you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.